it's obviously quite quite a lot of water connectivity over over a kind of extended period of time. But what were the main differences do you feel that made? To the community, uh, we did do a survey towards the end, and and clearly what we'd done was very well received. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> we have a fairly elderly community in Moffat. I think it's safe to say. So a number of people had to, um, well, everyone was obviously locked down, but, but some particularly needed support. Mm -hmm. So I think it made a huge difference to the people within the community, mm -hmm. knowing that um, they could get things delivered to them, knowing that they had someone, even just delivering, I, I was one of the Meals on Wheels deliverers, and people would sort of wave at you through the window or talk to you through the window from a distance. And, and I think for some of them, seeing a regular person, having some sort of contact, because if they were living alone, that might be all they got. The town hall is very much seen as the people you ring if you've got a problem. So we still get calls about social care, about not being able to access services, and, um, and we're still working through how we kind of deal with that. Yeah. Yeah. So what would make a difference to that <clears throat> going forward for you, for the Town Hall Trust, about your role in supporting community resilience, uh, learning from your experience of COVID? Yeah. I think greater clarity for us, <clears throat> ourselves, about what our role, role is mm -hmm. and isn't, so that it's easier for us to um, step away from the things that we shouldn't be involved mm -hmm. in because you know there's some personal guilt around saying no i can't help um <clears throat> so uh so that would that would really help us mm -hmm. but i think also some clarity out in the community about where resilience starts and finishes yeah. for some an acceptance that they need to have more personal responsibility for their own resilience yeah. because certainly one thing that came out was that people I mean, no one was going to be prepared for COVID, but people weren't prepared for a situation where they had to rely on themselves, um, you know, which could be the situation in anything, of a power cut, a flood, mm -hmm. severe weather, whatever. So, um, so I think a, a more information to help people become personally more resilient, a clearer view within the community of, of who does what, whether it's mm -hmm. the emergent services, whether it's the council, whether it's us, um, and just generally some more information out there, I think, mm -hmm. so that, that people would know where to direct their concerns um, in the future. So what difference does having the community involved make? Well, it's a safer response, um, because if we know the communities are responding, we can ensure that they are doing so in a safe way and that they are supported appropriately by blue lights and other category one responders. It does come down to insurance, but um, it just means that everyone's safe and we also know what's happening. It, it helps us with that guesser principle of the continuous analysis. If everything is coming around, we can ana analyze a situation appropriately and correctly. And that means that the response is in accordance to the incident. Um, it also means that everyone is working together. It means that at that front cordon, that forward um, coordination point, we've got category one responders and um, um, council incident responders. If everyone is talking, that means that it's really good. And it means that we get the right support to the right areas. And it means that everyone has a role and knows what they're doing when they're doing it. It just makes it easier um, and it brings everyone together. Um, and it's usually quite fun, even though an incident is usually quite a scary situation. Um, but it's, it's, it just means everyone's talking. It improves the communication, which is key in any incident, and it helps with analysis. From personal resilience with emergency plans and ensuring important documentation is at hand, to opening a rest centre for basic needs for the community, um, like tea and coffee. And it also means that our information streams are going direct to the community. So they know what they're doing, when they're doing it and what everyone else is doing. So that means that they're empowered to a certain extent because they've got their role and they know why they're doing it, when they're doing it and with whom. We also help with community emergency plans using templates from Ready Scotland and the help that we've had from SCDC um, assessing risk and mapping assets, which then help have a community plan that has intricate 
um, contact details so that everyone knows and can keep that communication going during an incident.